Foster is so full of shit. <laughs> you just say that in low voice and I'll curse. All right. Just throw people off. They'll think I'm you. Well, there's a couple of white chicks sitting around talking. This actually is all a fraud in that we, we have met once before. It's yeah, but I don't little, remember. But you don't remember. You just pretend you don't remember. All right, it's my go. And my first question, of course, I was uh, terribly concerned when I found you attacked in the New York Times by Georgette Mossbacher. Who is, you know, an, an authority on feminist issues? Well, of course she is. <laughs> uh, damn, I thought it must be like getting gummed by a newt. Uh, she called you out all right. She said she'd travel over the country and couldn't find the women you described in your book. All the women she talks to are satisfied with their lives, and furthermore, they paint their fingernails. <laughs> How do you explain that, Susan? Uh, yeah. women, women tend to agree with you when all the women are, you're talking to are in the mirror. <laughs> Well, I love, I mean, I love how uh, when the New York Times wants an expert on feminism, they go out and get the, you know, the queen of lip gloss. When, when they're looking to do an op-ed piece on the Middle East crisis, do they go out and get the executive of Barney's? <laughs> but I, guess, I guess she put me in, in that place. Uh, um, I wanted to ask you about the basis for the book. Um, I read in People magazine that the book was inspired by that Harvard-Yale study on marriage. Now, what I want to know is, uh, how did that come to arrest your attention so strongly? There's a report, you recall, that said uh, that uh, after a certain age, you were more likely to be blown up by a terrorist bomb than ever get married. Well, what did you think? God no, damn, no. you know? <laughs> What's wrong with soup for one can? Yeah, that's easy. The soup for one can? You don't even need a can opener. You're right. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for that. <laughs> I was nearly reaching a. 30 and I hadn't been bumped off by a terrorist. I mean, get married. <laughs> um, well, what happened actually was um, this, as we know, there is no man shortage. There's a woman shortage. And I should have been tipped off to that in the first place. And that the way I was alerted to the book was this unhappy bachelor, who now we know was suffering from the woman shortage, called me up and said, I must rush down to uh, the newsstand and pick up this week's issue of Newsweek because it had a very important message for me. So the next day I was going to um, a wedding in New York and unfortunately I had forgotten a book. So I went into the newsstand and there was this pathetic picture of, in Newsweek of um, this woman clutching her teddy bear, which as you know, women at 30 do a lot of, and charting our terrible chances of marriage. Um, and so I went to the wedding, and since this kind of thing doesn't affect me at all, I immediately fell into a funk. And then the more I thought about it, being a brilliant mathematician, it occurred to me that there might be something wrong with the calculation mm -hmm. here. So I went back and put in a call to this um, family and marriage and family statistics um, expert at the Census Bureau, who said, well, no, actually, there are about 14 things wrong with this study. And I keep, reporters keep calling me, and I keep telling them that. And then they say, oh, thank you very much, and hang up, and then uh, just use the statistics anyway. Um, so that's how it all, that's, that was sort of the first claim of the backlash. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I saw that story, too. And my reaction was, well, damn, I'll just have to get cracking. Have you been surprised by the reaction to your book? Oh, since I thought that I was the only one person who thought this, um, I kind of wonder, where, where, where were all these other people? <laughs> I keep getting these letters from women who said, yeah, that's how I felt. But, well, how come you weren't in my kitchen? <laughs> uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But I, I'm surprised by the reaction of the media. I mean, maybe it undermines my theory, since <laughs> the media was kind of ignoring feminism. And that interesting. Now, I, I thought the cover photo of you and Steinem, I, I don't know whether you all remember that uh, cover of Time magazine, very stark, <laughs> um, Steinem in black leather, and you're both standing there looking like Thelma and Louise at the end of the road, <laughs> was actually perfect evidence of your thesis. Half the people say to me, how come you know, they made you look like yeah. a bunch of terrorists in the Texas yeah. Book Depository. Right. And half the people say, yeah, that they made you look like a terrorist, and that's terrible. And then the other half say, yeah, they made you look like a terrorist. It's great. 
That's really funny. My mother's only reaction was, why weren't you wearing a dress? And why don't you do something about your hair? <laughs> we'll all have mothers forever. Um, I want to know, uh, this is a prepared question, uh, but so I have to give you some background. But actually, I do want to know the answer to it. So, um, Pulitzer Prize, best-selling book, cover of Time magazine, not to mention the big spread in people. What surprise? Not as, not as big as Clarence Thomas and uh, his There's wife. That. There's this. that. They didn't want to take a picture of me reading my Bible. God damn, they took a picture of me cavorting around outside the state <laughs> capitol with a sword in an effort to show that my wit was sharper than a rapier or some damn thing. Never been so humiliated. Is... What surprises you about becoming a celebrity? Well, I guess. <laughs> Well, for one thing, it's um, you, you can't you have you can't be rude anymore. I mean, I was in the middle of kvetching to this, just really chewing out this woman about my visa card being extended, and then I realized, oh, she probably has my name in front of her. <laughs> Don't tell everyone that. Tell me, bitch, if I'm gonna ask. You. Also, um, I don't know. I mean, I th I think it's it's odd that. Um, I don't know how quite to put this. <laughs> well, it's funny. I mean, people are, are not, no matter what you do, they, they're sort of saying, well, why haven't you done this or that? Um, uh, and people will say, um, well, you know, you, yeah, you were, on, you were in People, and you, and you were on the Donahue show, and you did all this. But you know, when you're on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, then you'll be really, my eye doctor said that to me. <laughs> no. And he's right. I mean, I really, you know, we, yeah. haven't, we haven't hit the big time yet. We haven't been on game shows. We haven't done. Uh, have you done Oprah? No. Listen, I have a deal. Let's form a plot. You kill Doug Foster, and I'll kill, kill Adam Hochschild, and we'll get on Geraldo as writers who kill. Um, your book is dedicated to your mama. And uh, you say in the book, um, I can't remember exactly how it went, that um, you were sorry the world never got to see her talent. Um, could you tell me a little bit about her? Well, she's a frustrated journalist oh, herself. Uh -huh. I was reading that um, Gloria Steinem's mother was also a frustrated journalist. So there you go. It's yeah. a trend. That's <laughs> it. It's a trend. <laughs> but um, I mean, she's someone who really uh, was born in the wrong time. Uh, maybe every woman in the 50s was born in the wrong time. <laughs> but um, she very much wanted to be an activist in the world, and um, yet she got sort of caught up in the, the feminine mystique era and woke up and found herself in the suburbs in a house dress, you know, with her making shake and bake, and um, poured her gifts into some things that were valuable, and she did um, all this gardening, and but she was so frustrated we had 14 <laughs> gardens, all of which I had to trim. And, um, you know, I just, she was somebody who could have made a huge, you know, con could have contributed something to changing the world, which is what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and like so many women of that period, um, found herself in, you know, sort of behind glass in some ways. Oh, I like that, behind glass. Let's talk about the criticism of the book. Um, I myself have not seen um, the deadly attack by the uh, ace journalist Sally Quinn. I recently had the pleasure of debating Miss Quinn on a television program. It's not difficult. <laughs> Aside from Georgette's uh, uh, absolutely uh, astonishing uh, dissection of your work, <laughs> what is the criticism? Well, my personal favorite was in Forbes magazine. Forbes. Which, as you know, is well known for its... An avatar of feminism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the author of the, the reporter who mm. took me apart, she, she called me up and said, I'm going to write a review of, of your book. And I said, oh, well, that's nice. And she said, well, I, I just completely agree, completely disagree with the premise. And 
I said, oh, well, what is that? She said, oh, well, that women are all sheep. And I'm sort of looking in the book, what page did I say that on? And then she said, and furthermore, I just want you to know that you said something rather critical about a piece I wrote in your book. I thought, oh, well, I guess we're going to have a fair review here. And um, what she was referring to is I had written, um, I would commented on an article um, that she had written a few years back in Forbes in which she uh, allowed that sexual harassment was no longer a problem in the workplace. <laughs> and anyone who said that it was a problem was a feminist propagandist nut. So she wound up writing this just glowing review of my book, mm. as you can imagine, <laughs> in which she referred to it as the Weiner's Bible. And um, she did not mention in her review that she had kind of an ax to grind. So then my editor um, at Crown, my publisher, wrote a letter to the editor saying, gee, this art, this review seems more like a seizure than an analysis. Could it be that uh, this woman, Gretchen, whatever her name is, um, was miffed because we, Susan took her article apart. Well, they ran the letter, but they only ran the first sentence, and they removed the part about, yeah. about um, the little ax to grind. So then my editor wrote another letter <laughs> to the head of mm -hmm. Forbes and said, you know, by eviscerating my letter, you make me sound like a fool. Um, and are you going to run the rest of it? And he wrote back and said, your letter was foolish to begin with. It needed no editing to make it so. <laughs> Which I later found out that he was the one who was most eager to have this attack in the first place. So really, well, you know, the uh, he also commissioned the sexual harassment magazines <laughs> and newspapers. It would be absolutely forbidden for somebody who had. You would think it was sort of a conflict of interest uh, <laughs> to review a book, but. But in these times of yeah. higher journalism. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anna Quinlan said of your book that it lacks treatment of the grays, for example, the internal conflicts of married career women with children who feel torn apart about how little time they have with their children. Um, do you think that's a legitimate criticism? Well, to invoke. Ellen Goodman, yeah. <laughs> and she pointed out in the, some other article in which mm -hmm. this was being discussed that you shouldn't criticize somebody for a book you didn't write. Exactly. And I wasn't. This wasn't really a book about um, you know, female behavior. Or it wasn't a survey of mm -hmm. women's attitudes. It was looking at. It was more a dissection and criticism of of the external pressures on the media and mm -hmm. popular culture. Um, that said, I do agree that, that you know, of course, it's not that simple. Of course, yeah. um, you know, married, working women are filled with conflicts, just as lucky single women who have it yeah. perfect lives. Um, yeah. But that partly, you know, and partly that's because of the backlash that, or not just the back, uh, the continued resistance to to creating. Um, a world in which um, women who have children are accommodated in any real uh, way in, in, in working life. And partly it's just it's the human condition to be conflicted, and mm -hmm. we'll never do away with mm -hmm. that, unfortunately. Speaking of nightmarish experiences, uh, you are a notoriously shy person. How are you doing? Well, fortunately, I have a twin. She's here tonight. Well, it's a good thing you don't have to audition for these speaking engagements. You know, so they yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, it's too late. You know, bring out the hook. It is one of the oddest things, I think, about being a writer in this society. Writing is a very solitary pursuit, of course. And you sit there all by yourself with your little machine typing mm -hmm. away for years on end. And then once you have a book, they make you go out and They give you your little tap dancing gig. shoes. Yeah. And it's just astonishing. I, and uh, they, they sell books now entirely through the electronic media. I kept sort of wistfully saying to my editors at Random House, don't you think we should put ads in magazines so that people who read will see? <laughs> and you wonder, I mean, do these people actually, the people who 
watch Oprah and Donahue? I mean, do they Apparently read? they do buy the books. The question is, do they read them? Yeah. Sort of in lieu of, you know, a flower arrangement, they buy our books. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of people do buy books and not read them, but not our books. <laughs> um, so here you are on the, on the celebrity um, book tour deal. What questions have you gotten from audiences that interested you most or startled you most? Well, they're the depressing questions. <laughs> I mean, there's the, the sort of, I'm always amazed at the infantile level of understanding of women, of, women's issues, or just basic things like, you know, well, what is feminism? Or, well, if women don't want to be raped, why do they go out at night? And, or, um, what are some of the other winners? Now, what, well, I don't understand what the difference is between flirting and sexual harassment. It's just very confusing for us guys now. I should point and think, well, then you should be staying home. <laughs> 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 But it, so, uh, the other, I mean, the other depressing thing is how you get asked, I mean, you must have this, you get asked the same three questions over and over, and over again by the media. I mean, it's embarrassed. I mean, that's part of the media, I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I want to just give, hand out little cards. You know, like, yeah. I've answered those three. What are the three? Um, well, what is feminism from the media? <laughs> um, um, where are we going? Where are we going? Wither. That's Wither. a good one. Oh, you know, is feminism in or out now? And will it be in or out in the next year? Is the backlash over? And if so, you know, what's hot for 1992? It is embarrassing to be a journalist, isn't it? <laughs> well, they also, I mean, some of the, where they sort of pretend that they've read the book and then <laughs> followed by, one, this, this one reporter called me and she said, oh, just great book, great book, and you know, I've been reading it and day and night, and then she said, one, only one question I have for you, why didn't, why didn't you have any footnotes? I said, well, there's 150 pages of footnotes at the back. She said, oh, 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 right, 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 right. Well, anyway, uh, i got to go. Oh, it is Do you, do you get stupid ones like that? Or? No, never. Um. <laughs> I'm still stumped by the first one I was asked when I started book tour. So, Miss Evans, what is it about Texas? <laughs> it's awful. It's embarrassing. Um, yeah, we... book tour. It's it's fairly bizarre. Well, I do have a piece of free advice for the audience: never write a book and give it a title that is not self-explanatory, <laughs> because you will be asked about it at every stop, and then you will have to tell. The goddamn wretched story one more time. Which you're gonna have to do tonight, of course. I'm gonna just get it out of the way now. It's our night. We don't have to, I don't have to tell that story. <laughs> My book, on the other hand, they just think it's about a whiplash problem. And it, it's true that I'm doing a sequel at, with Georgette called Eyelash. The subtitle is I Was Wrong. I guarantee it's gonna be a bestseller. <laughs>